Bruce Fenson joins us to break down those numbers and what he's seeing. Bruce, your stock is up sharply as well. What, what was your message to investors? Overall, the quarter looked okay. Yeah, I think uh, the message was that we're uh, playing really strong defense. And so we grew our deposits uh, 3%. We paid down wholesale funding. We set up a non-core division to run off some less attractive loans to make room for more attractive loan growth. Uh, and then we uh, also then said we're, we're playing some really interesting uh, prudent offense. So one of the things we did in the quarter was we attracted about 150 people formerly with First Republic onto our platform uh, and we fleshed out uh, how that business is going to build and be very attractive for us over the medium term. We gave a progress report on how we're doing in New York Metro following our two recent bank acquisitions. So I think we had a good mix of strength on defense and then also some really exciting uh, initiatives on offense. The, the Obviously, the deposit growth was key, and, and you guys needed that. But at what cost? How much more is it costing to get those those deposits? And what's the outlook there? Yeah, so we did uh, pay up a bit uh, to get that, but there's a little trade-off in that. So if you pay for deposits, deposits better quality long-term funding. And then we ran off some wholesale funding, which is also high cost. So uh, I think the uh, we took it in stride. We said the number one objective is to grow the deposits, even if we have to pay up for them. I think looking forward, assuming that the Fed uh, it does one more hike and pauses, then we should start to see those deposit uh, migrations from non-interest bearing into interest bearing accounts and also the kind of fraught competition for deposits in pricing. Uh, that should start to abate over the second half of the year. Are you already starting to see that? Because there was just such a rush to money markets uh, on the back of these rate hikes. Yeah, I think it's it's starting to slow. Certainly, the uh, migration out of non-interest bearing. We're we're back to about 23 percent of our total deposit base being in non-interest bearing. That's where we were fourth quarter of 2019 before we hit the pandemic. So that number ran up to around 30, and it's kind of run back down. There's no real reason if the Fed uh, stops here uh, from that. Uh, going down further. And that's that's pretty key in terms of your overall cost of funds. So what does the credit picture look like for the consumer, Bruce, right now? Uh, credit is in really uh, good position uh, for the consumer. So uh, I think folks have uh, certainly have uh, plentiful employment opportunities. And so the job market underpins the consumer and they still held on to a fair amount of liquidity that they uh, built up during the pandemic. So uh, we don't really see any any concerning trends at all uh, in consumer credit. Uh, on the corporate side, generally also most companies are in reasonably good shape. They've navigated this environment okay. Uh, they took steps in the pandemic to lock in lower cost financing. So uh, don't see a lot of trouble spots there. The one that we keep coming back to is in commercial real estate and the general office sector. Uh, we did give some details about our, our exposures there, which I think generally are diverse and pretty good quality. And we now have a reserve of 8% for loan losses against the general office exposure that we do have, which is yeah. pretty high by historical standards. So we're starting to work the pig through the python, so to speak. We uh, worked through about 26 loans that had maturity in the second quarter. Uh, and so and, or in the first half. And so that's about the number we have in the second half. So uh, we're on it. We have good people working on that. And we're working with borrowers to try to make sure we get through uh, in reasonable condition.